All right, so we know prosecutors and the defense made their closing arguments today in the trial of Derek Chauvin. Now it's time for those 12 jurors to do their job and reach a verdict. And people across the country, of course, as we've been mentioning, are bracing for the end of this trial, no matter the outcome. Joining me right now for insight into these deliberations and what comes next is Glenn Ivey, former Prince George's County State's Attorney and former federal prosecutor, Mr. Ivey. Thank you for making some time for us tonight. Let's get right to it, both sides. Sure. They wrapped up today. This is, you know, 14 days of testimony. This was it. This was their last chance to convince that jury. How do you think they did? Well, I thought they both, uh, both sides did solid jobs in, in presenting the evidence and their arguments. I, I think the prosecution had a lot more to work with than the defense did. I think the power of the video hmm. uh, was, was frankly pretty hard for the defense to, to address. But the prosecution also had a series of uh, really strong witnesses. They started with very emotional witnesses at the front end who were there and witnessed this. Uh, I thought they had strong uh, witnesses with respect to police use of force tactics attacking his argument. And then the medical uh, testimony, too, I thought was strong as well. Yeah, let's talk about that video just a bit more. You know, listening to these closing arguments today, prosecutors Steve Schleicher and Jerry Blackwell, they reiterated that same point over and over to the jury. You saw the video. Their star witness, essentially. Believe what you saw. Use common sense. You see Chauvin right there killing Floyd, they said. Now, the defense seemed to counter that by saying, don't believe what you see. There's more to this story. Eric Nelson, he started pointing to the, the crowd that was gathering around the scene, Floyd's drug use and overall health. How do you think this is going to sit with the jury? It seemed like he was trying to create some sort of ambiguity and saying there is more to this. Well, I mean, you never know with the jury. You can never anticipate what they're going to do for sure. And you know, I think the defense raised the points that it could raise. Uh, probably their best shot would be um, the medical issue was with respect to cause of death. They had a the Dr. Fowler, he actually here from Maryland, uh, formerly who uh, testified about the cause of death not being uh, Derek Chauvin's knee on his back and neck, uh, but you know the medical issues and, and drug use issues that uh, Mr. Floyd suffered from. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out with the jury. I, I thought the, 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 the prosecutors had really strong rebuttal to that. Hmm. Uh, and the cross-examination of Dr. Fowler was quite good as well. Yeah, let's talk about that jury a bit more. Uh, everyone's focused on that jury tonight. There were 14 seated throughout the trial. Two were told they're alternates, so the remaining 12 are in there right now and deliberating, and they include six people who are white, and the other six are black or mixed race. This is a pretty diverse group right here. How crucial is that, or, or does it even matter? Well, I, I think most lawyers think it matters, especially in a case like this, police, con uh, police cases where excessive force is alleged white officer, a, a black decedent. I think um, most people would really think that uh, a diverse jury is important. And, and with the expectation that sometimes people who are minorities have a different sense of how police uh, uh, behave and, and treat them when they're out on the street. So I think that's going to be a big piece. And, and it's an interesting. I, I wasn't expecting a, a jury this diverse in Minnesota, right. but that's what they got. Yeah, and last question for you. The, the million dollar question, what a lot of people want to know tonight, how long do you think deliberations will last? Well, you know, there's a lot of evidence. I think, yeah. you know, they, they, you know, typically juries will get back there and start trying to sift through not only the exhibits and remember the testimony that was presented. Um, and they'll, I, I'm sure they'll take their job seriously. And you've got uh, some, some complex charges, the distinctions between second degree and third degree murder and, and, and the manslaughter charge. But ultimately, in my view, the evidence is, is pretty much overwhelming. Right. Uh, the evidence of guilt is pretty much overwhelming. So you never know how long it'll take, but I, I would think that within a few days, they'd be coming back with a guilty verdict. Yeah. At least, I don't know if they'll convict on all three charges, but I would think at least on, on one of them. All right, Glenn Ivey, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll be talking again later this week. See you soon. Thanks for having me. You bet.